Hey guys, it's Kelsey. I'm back with another scrapbooking process video and this is layout one with my how to kill a kit with style. I am in love with this kit. Thank you everyone who came and watched me unbox it live. So I am using Heidi Swap's Carefree collection. I got it from the Secret at Secret Kit Club. So Christina threw in a bunch of other supplies that coordinates really well with this collection and it's stuff I would not have thought to put with this collection, but seeing it all together, I'm so inspired to create with it. Uh, this is for an international scrapbooking day challenge. Uh, I was playing along with the Secret Not Secret Kit Club all weekend and they had a couple challenges that helped us branch out to some other groups, groups we weren't really aware of. Uh, I don't really follow Paige Evans. I do love her collections. I don't think I've ever personally used her collections, uh, but she had a couple challenges and one of them was to use a large photo. Um, ideally, I think this would have been like a massive photo that took up most of the page. The largest photo I had on hand was a five by seven. So I just decided to use the challenge for this photo. This is the last photo I have for my Cavalia Odysseo um, Chronicles. If you've been following along, this is a photo that my boss gave me on my last day. Uh, just so I could remember him, he wrote a really sweet note on the back and I really wanted to scrap lift it. You saw in the beginning there, I, did, I created like a pocket on the back of this photo because it's so big. I had a couple of postcards that like the barn manager left his information on, um, another note from a friend because I ended up getting her and her family some tickets and she made this really beautiful card. Um, and I just wanted to keep those things. It's not something I really wanted to scrapbook and showcase because um, they weren't, you know, a photo, but I did want to include them in my scrapbook. So if I wanted to, I could have pulled them out whenever. So I did just create a pocket on the back of this photo where I tucked those things into. I also was very careful um, not to put any glue or anything on the note that Benoit wrote me. So if I ever felt compelled to relook at that note, I could and it wouldn't damage the note or anything like that, but it is covered up right now. Um, but I just thought it was so sweet. I just love that he gave me this photo. This is one of his um, bulls that he has and he rides, <laughs> they ride like horses. Um, he did have some long horns, but I know this, uh, this steer bull or whatever had a accident at some point and had to have his horns removed but I just think it's such a cool photo and Benoit looks so tiny on him <laughs> uh, so I definitely wanted to scrapbook this because it brings back all the fond memories of working uh, with him and so I decided to use this really cool my multicolor kind of watercolory background I loved how light it was but I really loved that it pulled in all the colors from the collection I really wanted to dive into this collection there's a lot of multicolored things lots of rainbows and Typically, I prefer to work with a couple colors at a time and not all of them, but I really wanted to jump in with this collection and really use some of the multicolor stuff right off the bat. Um, I did have some 6x8 photos from this collection, so I'm trying to primarily use those to layer my photo in. And because I had so much cool embellishment in this kit, I really wanted to experiment with playing with all the things. So this is pretty much my paper layers from here. I just want to play with all the goodies that Christina sent me. So I have a whole pack of cool rub-ons. I have multiple packs of stickers, an embellishment pack, these really cute heart wood veneer. Uh, so I'm just going to play around with everything to finish off this page. I really wanted to kind of stick my finger into every little thing <laughs> that um, was sent. So this is just an experimental page, having fun with my new collection and kind of trying some new things out. Um, I do want to go into my title that will be on this page. Benoit is, um, he's Canadian and he doesn't really speak very much English. He primarily speaks French. So we had a whole system of communication because obviously I don't really speak French. He did try to teach me a little bit. Um, but we had a whole system of how we would communicate and we actually got really good. We could have whole conversations between broken words and trades. <laughs> and um, one of the things if he would ask me what uh, an English word was, he would kind of mime it and he says, I need a word, I need a word. And he'd mime it and I remember he'd always say sweeping was swiffering. I always thought that was so cute because he'd have the brim. It's like, we need to swiffer. <laughs> and I was like, we were sweeping. Um, and he thought that was so funny. And then he just kept saying swiffer because it made me giggle. Um, but that was a huge thing with him when we were communicating is he'd be like, hey, I need a word. And um, 
you know, I would, we tried to figure out what it was he was trying to say. And so for this, and he even made an inside joke on it in his note on the back of this card, if he saw it in the beginning, he said, I got one word. And he said, friends. <laughs> and he was like, he was just a note about how um, we are best friends now and that he enjoyed working with me and um, we'll miss each other. And then some of his information. And I just thought that was so sweet because it was this kind of on running inside joke we had about the one word and so I really wanted to title this one word and then have a colon and say friends and that's really sentimental and meaningful to me. <laughs> um, it just sums up Benoit and I love it. Uh, so as you can see I'm just going through all of my ephemera bits here. I have this really cool um, kind of tag slash ticket multicolor piece that says let your kindness fill the world. I really want that to be the centerpiece of this little embellishment cluster to the right. And then you can see I am diving into these rub-ons. There's really cool rub-ons in this pack. And one of them is kind of a map print. Uh, and I really liked this one in particular for this page. I just thought it melded in with the background beautifully, but added some extra texture and some extra watercolor-y uh, goodness. And the colors are on point match for this collection, which is really cool. Uh, so I'm using a big piece to the left here because I know I want to branch out some embellishment to the left, um, but I didn't want it to only be on the left. I kind of wanted it to be um, throughout this whole bottom part of the page. So there's a tiny little corner of this rub on I stretched to the right side of the page just so you got a little glimpse of it over there. So it looks like it really runs the whole horizontal um, area of the bottom part of the page there. And then I had a scrap piece of twine. I'm pretty sure that twine came on a tag that was on some clothing. And I was like, oh, this is a good piece of twine. I'm going to save it. Um, and so that's been hanging out on my desk for a minute. So I decided to finally just use that up on that tag. Um, I have a little grayish tan paper clip. There's three little paper clips Christina included in here, which I love. Um, but once I started pulling in this heartwood veneer, and I, you'll see, I keep going. I still have a ways to go embellishment wise, just because I want to play with everything. Um, but once I kind of start layering up and kind of figure out what my clusters are going to look like, I pull back and take the paper clip off because I really love these heartwood veneer and I don't want there to be so much going on where you really can't appreciate everything. Um, so I decided to stick with the wood veneer on this page and save the paper clips for another another layout. But you can see me playing with that little arrow there. I think it's super cute. Um, but I'm trying to be cognizant not to use all of my favorite embellishments right away. Um, I'm already not using the cute little crochet flowers that come in this collection on this page because I'm really trying to focus on just the wood veneer hearts on this one. And I'll save that for kind of a special embellishment for another page. Um, I was super stoked. I mentioned this when I opened this uh, kit that um, there's a couple frames that come in the embellishment pack and I was so excited to see them because I'm trying to get back into using frames. I used to use frames a lot in my layering. I just love how they look. Um, so I wanted to use this kind of more neutral gray frame as the backing background layer for all of these little embellishments. So I'm going to tuck a piece of it in here by the tag. I'm going to use the other piece of that over on the left side when I start branching out in that embellishment cluster. <laughs> Um, but I just think it's so cute. And of course, I'm sorry, I know the last month you really didn't have to see me gut that much, but I'm going to be gutting all month long. I just can't help myself. I love this collection and I'm going to try and save every little bit I can. Um, so for those of you who don't like the gutting, you got a little bit of a, pre a reprieve last month. <laughs> but I'm going to try and save um, every bit that's going to be covered by a larger chunk or a larger layer. Uh, so I just patched that hole with a scrap of black piece of paper really quick. I'm going to go ahead and glue down my photo layers. I know that's where they're going. I love how they're framed by the rub-ons. Um, and now I can really start pull pulling in more stuff to finish out my clusters. But I really want to stick to this. There's a cute little rainbow to the left there that has a pink, a blue, and a yellow um, rainbow stripe. So those three colors I'm really wanting to make sure are represented um, so you can kind of see, I have a couple labels I'm going to end up pulling in. So those are the three colors I'm really going to focus on <laughs> because there's a lot of colors in this collection. Um, I didn't want to get too overwhelmed, even though I'm already using a multicolor background, but here is this little, uh, tile alpha that comes in the Heidi swap sticker book, um, that goes with this collection. And there is one row of numbers. So I went ahead and just said one word. I'll leave a little space there at this point. I know I want a colon. There's not a colon in the sticker sheet. So I'm thinking I'll either use Nuvo Drops, Enamel Dots, or maybe even just draw in a colon with a black pen. Um, but I do know I want a colon there. So I'm just going to leave a little gap. 
Um, I wanted to space this title across the entire top of this uh, photo, so you'll see I'm going to get my whole word together, but then I'm going to start from the right-hand corner and work myself uh, into the middle. Um, that way it's evenly spaced over the photo, and then I'll make sure that make sure my gap is going to be <laughs> in the center as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and put friends down. I just love that so much. And, and I wasn't going to introduce black on this page, but I really wanted to use this tile sticker sheet. So now I've introduced black officially. I really need to pull in some black into my other clusters. Uh, so you'll see there's some word stickers or kind of dictionary stickers to the left there. There's one sheet that's multicolor. I love that. But there's this other sheet that's black and white. This layout or this collection is so colorful. I was worried I was not going to use the black and white ones. So I'm actually kind of excited that using this title gave me an excuse to dig into the black ones because um, I know I'm going to have fun with the colored version. <laughs> um, but I just want to pull a couple of these in just so the black title isn't the only black thing on the page. It's really sticking out to me right now that that's the only black thing. And I want it to appear balanced around the page. So <laughs> I'm already thinking I'm going to have a, a tiny cluster up there by the title. I obviously have my little tag cluster to the right and I know I'll have my cluster to the left here branching out into the rub on section. Um, so I'm just thinking I want one of these black phrase stickers in each of these clusters that'll kind of create that visual triangle. It'll balance my black um, and we'll be good. So <laughs> that's the goal right now. Um, there is so much stuff Christina sent me with this collection. I'm, I'm just so excited about all the good things. Um, but there's like so much stuff. I'm trying to edit myself and just focus on a few things at once. Um, so I'm going through everything and trying to pick out a couple labels. It's thunderstorming right now if you can hear that. I'm sorry <laughs> if you can hear all the bangs and the rain in the background. But I just wanted to go through all the label stickers between all of these uh, different sticker sheets because I thought it would be cool to lay layer up a couple of them. I have a lot of labels to work with, which I love. I love incorporating labels in my clusters, <laughs> but there's so many. I know I want to use multiple on this page to go ahead and get dig into that stash a little bit. So you can see I have the rainbow I know I want to use. I'm pulling in a blue and a pink label to kind of lay, uh, layer that up a little bit. I really like how those labels look. I'm trying to figure out where I want this black sticker to be uh, positioned. That moves around a lot. <laughs> but like I said, this rainbow is yellow, blue, and pink. So I've already pulled in a pink and a blue label over by this rainbow. So that means I want to go ahead and search for a yellow label to pull in elsewhere just so that's all kind of cohesive. Um, so that's just what's going through my mind right now. <laughs> but I'm trying to make sure these labels are where I want them to be. I'm picking uh, some foam dots to have on the back of this rainbow just so it has a little bit of dimension. I think that's the only thing I put on foam um, on this page. But there is still some dimension because of those uh, wood veneer, which is nice. And the photo itself actually has a good bit of dimension because I did make that into a pocket. And there are some extra ephemera and cards and stuff and postcards tucked in behind there that the photo itself kind of has some dimension to which is nice. But I'm going to go ahead and glue down these two wood veneer hearts. I kind of want the hearts to create a visual triangle as well. Um, I just not sure where the third one's going to go but I love having these two in these clusters down here and because they're stylized kind of doodly hearts they have an angle to them where they're kind of facing a certain direction and I love that because I, I can kind of um, put them facing towards the photo on either side. So you'll see this one on the right kind of dips to the left towards the photo and this one to the left kind of dips to the right facing the photo. So my photo is framed nicely, which I think is really sweet. <laughs> um, and then once I had my labels down, I'm loving this little cluster over here by the rainbow. I really wanted to dig into another rub -ons. I'm really trying to go head on into the rub because I have six sheets of rub with this collection and <laughs> I'm really excited to use them. Um, so there's this one sheet that's just a bunch of kind of map keys where it kind of notes distance. And uh, there's a blue one that I thought would be really nice running up the side of the photo. Um, so I added that there with that cluster, which I think is really cool. <laughs> and now my clusters to the left and right are pretty much done. You can see I added that yellow label. Um, I think I'm still going to move around a black sticker in the right hand cluster a little bit, but you can see I added there it is. That's where I move it. <laughs> I added one black sticker to each area, and I think that's really cute. Um, so now my two lower clusters are done. I really just need to focus on the cluster on the top. 
Um, I forgot to mention there is a whole sheet of photo corners in the sticker book, but there's also some pink photo corners in the ephemera set. So I did go ahead and use up the ephemera pink um, corners on this page. So those are all glued down, which I think are really sweet. I like how it kind of frames the the page because this background is very light and airy and kind of floaty. And I kind of feel like those uh, um, photo corners on the corners of this layout kind of keep it all together. <laughs> I like how it frames the entire page. I did go back and use the branding strip from this page. I just wanted one more horizontal detail to kind of branch these photos out into these rub-ons to really make it feel like it's one piece. Uh, so I did just do a little um, border punch, scallop border punch, and tuck that up under there as well, and that really helps uh, bring in these ribbons with the rest of my layers. There we go. So I'm really liking that. Now my um, paper layers are officially done. I just wanted to add that one little detail. But here you can see I'm starting to work on my last cluster. This is the last part of this page. You saw I went in and added some matte black enamel dots to be the colon in my title <laughs> and now i pulled in my third heartwood veneer really wanted to create a visual triangle with that last heart um, there's still two more i think in the collection so i'm not out of those but i really like the idea of using three on here to really triangulate my photo <clears throat> So I'm just going with my ephemera bits. Again, with my color scheme, I kind of felt like the wood veneer was my yellow, so I really thought it would be nice to pull in a blue and a pink just to keep with the yellow, blue, and pink color scheme of my rainbow I'm focusing on. So I'm just layering up a few little bits. It says, next stop, life is an adventure. I thought that's so cute. I'm going to layer up those two bits and then have my wood veneer heart next to it. Um, and then you can see I am pulling in some kind of tealy blue enamel dots. I love that color and I think it goes really good with this collection. But once I get that last set of enamel dots done up there, that's it. I really don't feel like I need to um, journal too much. I love that there's ephemera I can pull out and the note I can read if I feel like it. Um, but yeah, here are the close-ups. Love this page, love this story, love digging into this collection. <laughs> um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.